is the model number, and I got my brand new squirrel cage in this box. You guys what that looks like. That's the squirrel cage. That's what turns and blows all the air into your house if you're getting vibration or something like that. That's what I started hearing inside of here. First things first is you're going to turn off your power. Make sure your power is off if you don't have a switch. Go to your electrical box. Make sure that this is cut off. You don't want to get electrocuted. That's hard. All these come apart pretty different, but they're also pretty similar. So your cage might come off a little bit different. Even if you have a different name brand, I have a Bryant. It doesn't mean that this video won't help you. So this is an inducer motor. It's not, this video is not about that, but this is what blows your bad gas out of your house. If this motor goes bad, that's in here, um, your furnace won't work. Another thing that beginners might not know is there's a little LED light in here that is solid. And if it's solid lit, that means everything is working right. And then if it flashes, say it goes blink, blink, pauses, blink, 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 and then starts over again. So that's 23, that's a Morse code. And you'd go over to your panel and you'd find 23 and it'd say pressure switch did not open. And it would tell you that that is your problem and that's what you would search for. Next, we're gonna go into here. I just threw that in there for, for people. This is your motherboard. For people that don't know that, there is a switch here. And if the power was on, on that switch right there, and you shut this and made like it was closed, then this would function and it would think that everything is okay to run so you could test it. But be very careful, don't start sticking your fingers in there and killing yourself. Okay, next over here, we got a motor and then you got your squirrel cage and this is the casing. We need to remove this unit. And in order to do that, we need to move the motherboard. And my motherboard has two bolts on there that when I unscrew those, I'll be able to remove this panel that's holding the motherboard and then there's two screws up here, one on this side and one on the other side. It's nice if you have two people, but I'm pretty experienced with this stuff, so I think I could do it. Don't snag any wires, take your time and go slow. Mine, I have to almost lift it up and over. Lots of wires here. It's coming. It's coming, it's coming, almost like a baggy. Just kidding. Oh, okay, so then I'm coming out. This unit. Here we go. Alright. Most important thing is don't start pulling hard on these wires. Take your time. You got all day. And if your heat's not working, go buy some floor heaters. That's what I did. I waited for these parts to come in. And I bought three floor heaters for about $40 a piece. And my house was staying nice and warm with no issues. So, you know, if you, uh, you don't want to get a panic attack over it, you can't get your part. There are supply stores, but they don't like to sell um, stuff to people because they want to sell them to the heat and cooling guys. I don't know, they got some kind of contract or something that they're not allowed to sell it to homeowners, but you can definitely find them on Amazon. <laughs> So I'm going to go over here and just show you guys what's going on. My squirrel cage was rattling really bad. And in between here, it was separating. So I bought myself some time by taking a flathead screwdriver. And because this was separating from these fins and it, this, the little, hold on, let me show you. That plate that's on there, I'm calling this a plate right here, was getting loose and spinning. And it wasn't connected to this hardly anymore. So I took a flathead screwdriver and I banged in between each one of these very lightly and you could almost see where it spread it and it was able to hold on again and I bought myself some time. But my motor's going bad, it was leaking oil, you could, it's not supposed to leak any oil all over the place and it was shaking very bad. So I'm going to go ahead and start installing this. These are the four screws you're going to remove. Also I got two screws here that I have to remove and two, one on each this side, that way this plate will come off. So you'll see me do that in the video. And we're gonna go ahead and do that and try to remove this whole unit assembly and start putting it all back together with the new motor and squirrel cage. I got all four screws unscrewed off of the motor mount. Now there's one screw over there that I'm gonna unscrew right here. 
and that's gonna separate the squirrel cage. Sometimes it could be like, not solder down there, but it can be very hard to get this off, especially if it's been on there for like 10 years. So you're gonna have to just try to bang it out or work your way out of there. Now I'm gonna slide the motor out. Yours might not slide out easy. It might, mine was actually pretty rough. I was already in here the other day to get the model number and parts number to get this thing. Uh, so it was rough to get it out. I had to use a crowbar to almost pry the darn thing. So, okay, now I got the squirrel this real quick. There's your model number right there, the one that says LA22ZA120. That is your model number. You're gonna search that, Google it. You'll pop up with these things. Just make sure your pictures match your old motor. Um, over here on the side of this motor, you have another model number, and mine happens to be the uh, 5KCP3PG and then a space V623CS. Those must match your motor. Also, your specs where it says horsepower 3 fourth, volt 115. Make sure all those numbers and then your RPM on the side there. If everything matches, you're good to go. Also, look at your wires. Inspect your picture before you order your motor. It's, it doesn't hurt. So if you see extra wires and stuff, hey, you're going to have to question that. Ask the person selling it. Figure out stuff. You know, if, you, if you're a beginner, homeowner, or something like that, you're trying to do this yourself, it doesn't hurt to ask questions. All right, we're going to put this in. Also, take pictures and try to write down, remember which way stuff came out. Before you remove stuff, take a bunch of pictures with your phone. It doesn't hurt. So, I actually put this... Put this in, put one of these in before, and I put it in the wrong way, so I had to take it all apart again. So that could really uh, get you pissed off. Like I put this in that way, and that's not going to work because I have to screw the bolt on the other way. Anyways, so make sure you put everything in the right way. Take your time. So now I got the squirrel cage in there. I'm gonna have to replace the motor next. So I'm gonna start unclipping wires. It's pretty simple. It's all self-explanatory. You see when I come over here, like say I got a red wire, let's follow this red wire. And to see how it comes off, it goes onto your motherboard and we're gonna unplug it. Before I unplug it, it's not gonna hurt. I'm gonna take a big picture like this and figure out where every wire goes or I can go backtrack on this video and see where the wires went because then you'd be like, oh God, where did that go? Don't make that mistake. Take pictures, take your phone with you and then you can't mess this up. I'm gonna go over all my wires real quick for you guys just so you could see you got your ground. I'm going to unscrew that one. I got the uh, red one, which is your positive. You got your black one, which is your negative. Blue. Who the hell knows what that one is, but just make sure you put blue one where it goes. Just kidding. <laughs> I really don't know what the heck it is. But uh, So you got red, blue, and then you got your white. Let's follow my white, and there's my white right there. And to unplug these, I can't do it with two hands, but all you do is push it upwards this way. So I need both hands to get these out, very delicate. I don't want to sit here with one hand and start wiggling on that motherboard. So now I'm going to start unplugging them and putting in the new ones. Oh yeah, then you got your two brown wires that go to your capacitor right here. The two brown ones. Sorry about that, I almost missed those. Okay, I removed all the wires off of the board. Nice and easy. And now I'm going to start um, putting on the other motor wires. side by side I'm gonna start plugging in what needs to go in so far I've just put one wire in the capacitor over here and next I'm gonna just start plugging in all the wires that need to go I'm gonna pop this baby in so let's go ahead and put this in it's all color coordinated so as long as you get the right motor for your right unit uh, you'll be able to plug it all in it's common sense let's go ahead and put the sucker together One more thing, I'm gonna go over the danger points. Um, make sure you hook up a ground wire, gotta have your ground. And second of all, do not touch left and right on that capacitor with any metal objects. And when I do plug those in, I use something with a rubber handle. If you wanna wear a rubber glove, that's fine too. Don't sit there and start touching this and that and that all over and you'll get zapped, you know? You can get zapped. Anyways, over here, I got everything plugged in. Red wire into the spot. You can see I marked it where the red wire went. I got blue and I got black and then I got my white wire over here. I even took a marker and I marked it over there where the white wire went. I put a W 
just so I knew it did. Actually, on the motherboard, I just noticed that it says BL, but it must be something up. I don't know. BLW is what it says. Anyways, that's all plugged in. Uh, I got these mounts in over here. There is a little metal collar that goes over there. Let me show you guys what that looks like. It's around this nut. You see that? It goes on the top side only. For some reason, whoever put my motor in last time, put one on the bottom side. I wonder if that added vibration to it. Not sure. But only one goes on the top is what it's supposed to be. So just like that. Doesn't even make sense why they put two of them. They don't even go in together. Make it not screw on very tight. Anyways, uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and start putting this together and we're gonna fire it up, see what happens. There is a flat side of the uh, mount shaft right there. You see that? The reason that it's flat and it's got that little indentation is because that screw right there is going to be where the flat side goes. I hope that makes sense to you. Put the flat side up against the nut so it can lock onto it. I got my motor in position. I made sure all the wires are not going to get tangled all up in there. Um, don't just think you're going to go mount this and you're going to be fine. Check this out. When I spin it, oh, no, it's not. oh there it goes. It's rubbing on the inside so before you go and fire this thing up spin it hand with your hand and make sure that you're not getting any rubbing it's got to be centered so but I like to mount my motors where see how it's up and down if you were to mount this motor sideways right now and try to screw it in you're holding it up you're putting pressure on that on those screws so right now gravity is pulling this right in the center so when I mount this motor I know it's gonna be you know in the middle if that makes any sense I hope what I'm explaining also on my um, housing for my um, squirrel cage, I have two screws left and right. How did I know which one to put them in? All right, I'm gonna move one of these screws and I'm gonna show you guys, especially if you have a used unit. You see where that like circle is, that dust? That tells you that that's been there for years and years. That's the only way you get that little ring on there. So then you know it doesn't go over to here. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount that. Again, I got the metal casing screw right here and nothing on the underside. If you don't have those rubber, these rubber things, make sure you go to the hardware store and go pick something up and explain to them what you need. Because if you don't, that absorbs the vibration. That's really gonna cause you for your motor to burn out and start shaking later in the future. Give it a good spin. Make sure that it is not wobbly looking like a bent bike tire. over there can you see those tracks that they go in there's actually two of them one in the front where that red thing is the blemish and one way in the back both sides make sure you slide them both in before you go in and think this is good to go back where we left off okay screw the motherboard back up that's your inducer motor i talked about in the beginning where it blows the uh, bad gases um, out of your house and up and out so you don't get stick and die. Um, there's your LED light that's solid, which says everything is working correctly. It says it somewhere here, continuous on. Control has 24 back power, all right? Your thermal couple is heating up. Gas is being released into the uh, furnace. Next, your uh, what we just changed right now, your, uh, let me put the camera in there. So if your blower wheel starts spinning and it's vibrating really bad, that means you got a bent blower wheel. Possibly a bad motor, but most likely it's a bent blower wheel. So make sure that you buy it from an HVAC company, direct. Do not buy it on eBay and Amazon. There's so many bent ones being resold on there, it's ridiculous.